Okay, welcome to this mini lecture about factorial designs and this mini lecture is brought to you by the movie Foxy Brown. Okay, let's first talk about some factorial essentials and it surprises me how loud my squeaky chair is on the uh, recording. But we're talking about factorial designs. A factorial design means there's a, more than one independent variable. Now that we're dealing with more than one independent variable, we're calling these independent variables factors. And so a factorial design means that we have several independent variables. Uh, our notation system that we use to describe uh, you know, these factorial designs is that we have numbers and the number of numbers represents the number of factors or independent variables. The value of each number indicates the levels of that factor or that independent variable. So a 2 by 3 factorial has two independent variables and one independent variable has two levels, the other one has three levels. And a 2 by 4 by 4 factorial has three independent variables. The first one has two, fact two levels, excuse me, uh, the second has four levels and the final one has four levels. We read the x in factorial notation uh, as by. So I'm saying 2 by 3 and 2 by 4 by 4. The x actually refers to multiplication as we recognize that symbol and it, it comes from the idea uh, you know from the basic statistics that we use to analyze these factorial designs. Uh, so that's where we get the big the X to stand for the by. However, there is one interesting thing. We want to know how many conditions there are in a factorial design. Now we can actually just read the X as multiply. That is, 2 times 3 is 6 and in our 2 uh, by 3 factorial there are 6 conditions. 2 times 4 times 4 is 32 and in our 2 by 4 by 4 factorial there are 32 conditions. Also we need to talk about a factorial matrix. Uh, we have an illustration here. Uh, it's a 2 by 2 factorial matrix. There are two levels of each type of training and presentation rate. So uh, in this matrix, we have across the uh, two columns the presentation rate, two seconds per word, or four seconds per word. And across the rows, we have the type of training, either imagery or rote. So what that means is in the uh, first cell of the experiment, that is imagery by uh, two seconds, what happens is subjects in that particular cell of the experiment are given imagery training to you know imagine uh, to try to imagine uh, the a picture of the word and the words are presented every two seconds in this experiment. In the four seconds per word rote cell uh, subjects are told to try to rote memorize the words by rote and the words are presented every four seconds. Okay, now let's talk about main effects. A main effect is the overall effect of an independent variable. So what that means, for example, is that the main effect of type of training compares data in the uh, shaded cells with data in the non-shaded cells. So type of training is either imagery or rote. And so what we're going to do for the main effect of type of training is to compare the cell, cells A1, B1, and A1, B2 with A2, B1, and A2, B2. That is, we're going to compare all the subjects who received imagery training regardless of the presentation rate with all the subjects who received rote training regardless of the presentation rate. Likewise, we can look at the uh, main effect of presentation rate where we're going to compare everyone 
who receive words two uh, seconds per word, and everyone who received words at four seconds per word, uh, regardless of their type of training. And what this does is it allows us to go back to a single independent variable experiment. That is, what if we didn't have any imagery or rote type of training? What if only this experiment had one independent variable, which was presentation rate with two levels? What would the experiment be like? Well, the main effect will tell us that. So let's take a look at how we actually calculate these main effects. So uh, here we have the uh, factor matrix, but I've added in the means for the participants in each one of the conditions. So for example, subjects who were told to imagine what the words were, and the words were presented uh, two seconds per word, they averaged 17 words recalled. Uh, the subjects who were presented the words at four seconds per word and were given rote memorization instructions, they were called on average 18 words. So let's say that we want to calculate uh, you know, some main effects. What we need to do is calculate the uh, row and column means, sometimes called the marginal means because they're in the margins. So. Uh, we just calculate the means uh, of you know, the uh, cells in that row or that column. So the marginal mean uh, uh, for uh, imagery uh, would be 17 plus 23 divided by 2 is 20. Uh, the marginal mean for rote is 12 plus 18 divided by 2 is 15. The marginal mean for 2 seconds is 17 plus 12 divided by 2 and the marginal mean of 4 seconds is 23 plus 18 divided by 2 which is 20.5. Uh, we're just calculating the averages so we just add everything up divide by the number of cells that we have. And then actually calculating the main effects is very easy. We subtract one mean effect from another, or one marginal effect from another. So for our hy hypothetical data, the main effect of imagery, we take the marginal mean of 20, subtract the other marginal mean of 15, and these are the two different levels of the same independent variable. Uh, we subtract 20, uh, 15 from 20, that gives us 5. Uh, then the main effect of presentation rate, 14.5 minus 20.5 is minus 6. Uh, students ask, does it matter, you know, you know, in terms of the minus and the negative, in terms of what number we subtract from what number? No, it doesn't. Uh, you know, as long as you do it consistently, it really doesn't matter. And it's contextual into the uh, you know what you're doing, so nobody's going to ask you to calculate a marginal mean or main effect without really having the context for you to show them that. So, what does this mean for our hypothetical data? The main effect of type of training uh, is five words. That is, imagery produces better recall than rote by five words. That's the main effect. And the main effect for presentation rate is minus six. That is, two seconds produces worse recall, 14.5, than four seconds, and that's by, that worse recall is by six words. Now, before we move on to talk about an interaction, I have to introduce something that's not introduced in the textbook, which are simple main effects. Simple main effects are just basically calculating the effects of going from one cell to another at one level of an independent variable. Calculating the effect of going from one cell to another at one level of the independent variable. So for example, we can talk about the effect of training at four seconds. And so what that would be is we were going from, uh, you know, 
you know, uh, imagery at four seconds to rote at four seconds. So we're going from 23 words to 18 words. And so we just subtract 18 from 23 or 23 from 18. Uh, again, it's contextual, so it doesn't really matter as long as you do it consistently. And so, therefore, the simple main effect of training at four seconds is minus five words. That is, uh, you remember uh, words less well by five words if you're using rote rather than imagery. The uh, simple main effect of training at two seconds you know, is we're looking at the changes between imagery at two seconds and rote at two seconds. So that's uh, the change between 17 and 12. That's minus five words as we go from imagery to rote. So the effect of rote at two seconds is remembering five less words than imagery at two seconds. Then we can talk about the main effect of rate at imagery. And so uh, what we're talking about is two seconds per word at the you know imagery and four seconds per word at the level of imagery. So we're talking about the change between 17 and 23 words remembered. That is a gain of six words if you go from two seconds to four seconds per word. And then the final simple main effect that we have in this two by two table is rate at rote. And so that's the effect of the independent variable presentation rate at the level of rote. So we're talking about uh, you know rote at two seconds versus rote at four seconds, eight, uh, 12 versus 18, and that's an increase of six words. So these are, are how we calculate the four simple main effects in this two by two table. Now I'm ready to actually introduce the idea of an interaction. Uh, and let's take a look at that by looking at a different uh, hypothetical data set. Uh, the independent vari <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, the independent variables in this uh, hypothetical data set are course emphasis and student major. We can either have courses with a lab emphasis or a lecture emphasis and we have students who are either science or humanities majors. And the results are the student scores uh, in the classes. So for example, we have in the uh, first cell of the table uh, science majors who are taking lab emphasis courses and they ended up with a score of 70 in the, uh, as a grade in the course. Uh, so that's what we're talking about. Now, first off, there are no main effects because the row and column means all equal 75. And you can stop the slideshow and actually uh, work this out to prove to yourself that there are no main effects. Okay, so now we're ready to introduce the definition of an interaction. An interaction is when the size or direction of a simple main effect on the dependent variable of independent variable 1 changes at different levels of IV2. I really shouldn't have the the in there. Okay, but it's when the size or direction of a simple main effect, that is by size I mean the value going from like 3 to 4, or direction, that is the sign going from positive to negative, of the simple main effect uh, of you know independent one, variable 1 changes at different levels of the second independent variable. And it's always, we're always talking about the simple main effects change in terms of the dependent variable. A lot of people get confused and they say that an interaction is when the effects of independent variable 1 change at different levels of independent variable 2. No, that's not the case. It's when the dependent variable changes uh, at different levels of the second independent variable while you're looking at the simple main effect of one independent variable. So let's take a look at an interaction and prove that there's an interaction there using that definition. So 
we have four simple main effects in this two by two table. We have uh, students major at the lab level of class emphasis. And so that's 80 to 70. And the simple main effect would be then 80 minus 70, which is minus 10. What that means is in lab emphasis courses, as you go from science majors to humanities majors, you see a decrease in their grades. Then we have uh, the simple main effect of major at lecture. Uh, and so what we see is we go from 70 to 80. What that means is in lecture emphasis courses, we see an increase in the grades of students as we go from the science majors to the humanities majors. Uh, then we need to look at emphasis at uh, the level of science majors. And that is, we're going from 80 to 70. That's a decrease of, you know, uh, you know, of grades by 10 units. Finally, emphasis at humanities, the emphasis of the course at the level of humanities majors. So what we're talking about here is, uh, you know, in lab courses, humanities majors uh, score a 70. In lecture courses, they score an 80. That's an increase in 10 units. And again, uh, the direction doesn't really matter. Uh, it's arbitrary as long as you're consistent. Now, I said in the previous slide that an interaction is when the simple, ma uh, the simple main effect of independent variable 1 changes at different levels of independent variable 2. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at that. Major is independent variable 1, and lab and lecture are the different levels of independent variable 2. So major at one level is minus 10, major at the other level is positive 10. Is that a change in size or direction? Yes, it's a change in direction. One is negative, the other is positive. So therefore, we have an interaction here. And in that, indeed, we could go to the other independent variable and or the two other simple main effects and look at that. Uh, we have emphasis at sciences and emphasis at humanities. And does emphasis change at the different levels of you know, the other independent variable? Do the simple main effects of emphasis change at the uh, different levels of you know, uh, major? And indeed they do. For science majors, it's minus 10. For humanities majors, it's positive 10. The direction changes from negative to positive. So therefore, we have an interaction here. Let's take a look at no interaction. Going back to our original table, uh, just a review. Uh, training at 4 seconds, the simple main effect is minus 5. Training at 2 seconds, the simple main effect is minus 5. So an interaction is when uh, independent variable 1, the simple main effects of independent variable 1, change in size or direction across the different levels of the other independent variable. As you can see here, it's minus 5, minus 5. They don't change in size or direction. They're the same, so there's no interaction here. Likewise, rate at imagery and rate at rote, the simple main effects are both 6, so therefore there is no change uh, in size or direction. There is no interaction. We can talk about what this means in English. Uh, going back to our interaction example, whether lab or lecture emphasis is better for students depends upon which major is being evaluated. Or we could say whether science or humanities majors do better depends on what type of course emphasis there is. So really that's what an interaction is all about. It's that depends. Overall, we can't say that lab or lecture emphasis classes do better. It depends on which major you are. And that's what an interaction means. It means what's going on depends on something else. Now, 
The idea of an interaction may sound foreign to you and alien. However, you have a perfect understanding of what an interaction is. All I have to say is drug interaction. And now you understand what we're talking about. Because when we talk about drug interactions, what we're talking about are the interactions we've been talking about for the last 10 minutes. Uh, let me give you an example. So let's say that uh, when you take a decongestant, you get a little sleepy. And when you have a beer, you get a little sleepy also. Okay, so let's take two cases then. Case A, uh, you take a decongestant and then you go out and you have a beer and you end up kind of sleepy. Or let's look at case B. You take a decongestant, you go out and have a beer and you fall down unconscious. Which case is a drug interaction? and we recognize right away that case B is this drug interaction, the thing that we're all scared of. Uh, case A is just the drugs combining as we would expect. Case B is this scary interaction, this scary drug interaction that could really hurt us. And that's really what we've been talking about. And if you don't believe me, let me go back to simple main effects and prove it. Okay, so here's uh, two uh, you know, uh, tables. Let's say that we're talking about drug X and Y and drug M and N. And uh, the way they do drug tests is they give people a fairly high, or not people, but they give animals a fairly high dose, like uh, 100 animals a fairly high dose, and then after an hour they count how many have died. So let's say that we're going to be doing that. So in the first uh, example on the left of no interaction, what we do is we uh, you know, give uh, animals drug Y or drug X. And we either give them no drug Y or drug Y or no drug X or drug X. So in the first cell, uh, the you know, animals get no drug Y, no drug X. After an hour, zero animals are dead. And then uh, in the next cell over to the right, uh, we give them drug Y and no drug X. Uh, so this is the effect of just drug Y by itself. After an hour, five animals die. Uh, so we know that that's how dangerous drug Y is. It kills five animals after an hour. Uh, dropping down to the bottom row, uh, no drug Y, drug X. Uh, that kills five animals after an hour. Uh, so we know how deadly drug X is by itself. Five animals die after an hour. And then finally, in the last cell, drug Y and drug X are given, and ten animals die after an hour. Now this is no interaction, and let me demonstrate that to you with the idea of simple main effects. Uh, what's the simple main effect of drug Y? And we can see that just by looking at the table, going from zero to five animals, that is five. So the effect of drug Y, the simple main effect of drug Y is five deaths. Uh, what's the simple main effect of drug, uh, you know, uh, X? Well, that is five deaths also, going from zero down to five. Okay, so then what we do is, uh, we look to see whether or not there's any change in the simple main effects now that we look at the rest of the table. That is, as you go from uh, zero to five animals dead, that's a simple ma main effect of five. Now as you drop down to the bottom row, what's the simple main effect there at the bottom row? Five to ten is plus five animals. So the simple main effect of drug Y at no drug X is 5. The simple main effect of drug Y at the level of drug X is 5. 5 and 5 are the same. There's no change in size or number. So therefore there's no interaction here. And I've demonstrated that by referring to simple main effects. Now let's look at the example on the right which has an example of a drug interaction. Drug M, given by itself, kills five animals. Drug N, given by itself, kills five animals. However, given together, 
Wow, 20 animals. Boy, that's an interaction. Well, let's prove it. Uh, the simple main effect of M at the no drug N level is 5. What's the simple main effect of drug M at the drug N level? Well, 15. Uh, so the simple main effect at no drug N is 5. The simple main effect uh, at drug N is 15. That's a change in size. A change from 5 to 15 is a change in size. So therefore, based on the simple main effects, there is an interaction. So that's what an interaction means. It means that things are combining in a weird way. Or another way of saying things combine in a weird way is things depend. How dangerous is drug N? Well, it depends if you're taking drug M. Uh, do uh, humanities majors do better in uh, you know, better than science majors? Well, it depends on which classes. So that's the long and short that I can tell you about main effects and interactions. Now, for the exam and for the homework assignments, uh, you're asked, you're given the data table, and they ask you, is there a main effect there? And I would suggest what you do is you just basically look at the marginal means. And you can just easily like jot down and figure out what the marginal means are in all of the problems on the homework and also on the exam. So to look for uh, main effects, uh, basically look to see whether or not the marginal means are different. If they are, yes, then there's a main effect. Uh, interaction, I wouldn't bother calculating simple main effects uh, to look for an interaction. There's a much simpler way. I would just graph out the data and look to see whether or not the lines are parallel. And if the lines are not parallel, there's an interaction. If the lines are parallel, there's no interaction. And that's the easiest way on the homework or on the exam to determine if there's an interaction in the data or not. So uh, that's the mini lecture on uh, main effects and interactions. Uh, hopefully this will help you with the homework and the quiz and the final exam. Bye-bye.